Sally Clark was originally convicted of murdering both of her infant children who died within two years of each other in 1996 and 1998. The defence argued both children died of sudden infant death syndrome, also called cot death, which can have underlying genetic causes. The prosecution's case of murder included a badly flawed statistical analysis by Professor Sir Roy Meadow. His argument was based on the probability of a child dying of SIDS as being 1 over 8,543. And what he argued was that if that was the probability of a single child dying of SIDS, the probability of two dying of SIDS was simply that number multiplied by itself, which gives you a number which is close to 1 over 73 million. And he concluded that the probability of innocence was about 1 in 73 million. Now, even ignoring the possibility that, of the prosecutor's fallacy here, there were two fundamental statistical errors. The first is the incorrect assumption that two brothers dying of SIDS are independent events. Because of genetic issues, if you know that the first son has died of SIDS, it's more likely that the second one will die of SIDS also. It also fails to take account of the prior probability of murder given an infant death. So we know the first child is dead, and only 8% of infant deaths are murder. Hence, if SIDS and murder are the only possibilities, then the prior probability of SIDS for a dead infant is about 92%. Clark was convicted in 1999. A first appeal based on the flawed statistics didn't succeed, but the conviction was overturned in the second appeal in 2003 after it was disclosed that evidence the second child had died of natural causes had been withheld. Sadly, Sally Clark died of alcohol poisoning in 2007. What I'll now present is a very simplistic Bayesian network model of the case. It doesn't contain all of the detailed evidence, but it does capture and fix the core probabilistic issues. First of all, note that there's a dependence between child A's cause of death and child B's cause of death. And also notice that, as in the case, we're only considering SIDS or murder as mutually exclusive and exhaustive hypotheses. And it's because of that that this represents a suitable prior probability. So given that an infant has died, and that was the case here, of course, statistically, we know that just under 8% of such cases are murder. And that means that the prior probability for murder of the first child should be this probability. Now notice the dependency here. Let's look at the probability table for child B's cause of death given child A's. We know both children are dead. Fortunately, there are very few such examples of two dead children within the same family. But what we know statistically is that if the first died of SIDS, then it's almost certain that the second was not murdered. And hence, we almost certainly conclude that the second died of SIDS. Whereas if the first baby has been murdered, it's almost certain that the second baby will also be murdered. Hence, these probabilities look almost identical. So what we can see is that the prior here, given that we have got two dead children, is guilty 7.89%. Now, there's one other point that I should make, and this was something that I covered when I wrote a paper about this, is that there was one small flaw in the work of the Bayesian and probability experts who exposed the errors in the original case. And they did not take account of the fact that the conclusions were not a simple case of murder them both or they both had SIDS. Technically, although the probability is small, it is still conceivable that one could have been murdered and one could have been SIDS. And in that case, Sally Clark would still have been guilty of murder, even if it was only one child. And that's why there's this distinction here between the conclusions and the guilty verdict. What we're going to do now is start to enter evidence, and it will automatically update as I enter the evidence. So first of all, let's look at what happens to that starting probability of 7.89% guilty when we enter evidence that the first child suffered bruising. That has gone up significantly to 29.87%. That already increases the probability that child B will have bruising because it already increases the probability that child B will be murdered. Well, there was bruising on child B, so let's enter that evidence. And there is now a greater than 50% chance that Clark was guilty of murder. So the evidence is fairly probative. It made a switch from a 8% prior to a 68% posterior. Almost certainly not enough to convict, but probative nonetheless. 
But it turns out there actually were signs of disease. And any signs of disease would be supportive of the SIDS hypothesis. And in fact, you only need to see it in one child for that to make a major difference. So if we see it in the first child, that completely reverses our belief. We're now fairly certain, despite the bruising, that Sally Clark is not guilty. And let's see what happens if we also find signs of disease in child B. Probative guilt drops to 0.09%.